Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 film Veritica, which is coming to Shudder on Thursday, September 24th. It is a Shudder exclusive, not a Shudder original, but Shudder exclusive. And because of that, because of when I'm dropping this, the film hasn't even come out yet. This is a no spoilers review in case you want to see it. And I'm going to tell you up front, you definitely need to see this film. <laughs> I was thinking about like continuing to play it out and be like, you need to see it because it's life changing and so good and everything, but I'm not going to do that to you. This film is terrible. Uh, <laughs> this I've seen so many movies in my life and this is literally one of the worst films I've ever seen. It is that bad, but I say that to say you should see it because it is so bad. Now, if you watch enough of my reviews, you know, I love movies that are so bad. They're good. Now, this kind of fits in that category, so I will, you know, give it two numbers at the end for my review because um, it's so bad. Oh, my gosh. And I think I probably will rewatch it at some point, but mainly just to show it to other people and be like, look at how terrible this film is. Like, it's that bad. Like, literally, this is what happens when you have someone who's no good at directing, no good at writing, uh, but has money and is a celebrity and they just feel like making a film. Like, this is what you get. And they put no real time into learning the actual craft, it seems like. Except maybe operating the camera. Although I don't even know if he operated the camera. I would have to look into that. But anyway, it's written and directed by Glenn Danzig. Yes, that Glenn Danzig, who was the front man for Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig. Uh, most well-known song, probably, Mother. Great song. Uh, he did great music, and that is that is one big plus, I can say, for the film. There is really good music in this film, as there should be, because of who Glenn Danzig is. So, so good on that. Uh, he will be directing another film. There's another film on his IMDb credit called Death Rider in the House of Vampires, which, based on that title alone, I have got to see this. Uh, and based off my experience with Veritica, I have got to see it. Uh, I think I'm going to show this to my wife because she's not going to believe it. I literally texted my best friend during this and was like, dude, this hits shutter next week. You need to see this because when I'm recording this, it's a week prior. I was like, you have got to see this it is so terrible. Like, and he's like, is it like the room by Tommy Wiseau? And I was like, you know, it's funny you say that because when I was doing a little research uh, up front for this film, uh, a lot. I found that a lot of people were likening it to The Room, but I wouldn't say it's like The Room just because uh, I like The Room. Like, for me, Tommy Wiseau's movie The Room, I mean, it's terrible, yes, but it has a lot of rewatch value because it's that funny and entertaining. Veritica has some of that to it, um, so I guess it is a little bit like it, but it's not nearly as entertaining and not as rewatchable. So this falls more into the category of just... You know, maybe you probably just want to see it once to just be like, wow, that was, that was something. <laughs> so anyway, this film was uh, done in an anthology style, and it has three different stories. So I'll give you a little bit of information on each of the stories. No spoilers, though. Uh, and it was based off a series of comic books or, that were done by Glenn Danzig's company, Veritique. So real original on the, you know, title of the film. You just put an A at the end of your company name. Uh, Danzig says this is a tribute to anthology films like Black Sabbath and Trilogy of Terror. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, and normally, since this is a no-spoiler review, I would give a little bit of a synopsis here, but I'm not going to do that uh, for two reasons. One, it's three stories really all kind of pulled together by one person who's kind of like a Crypt Keeper type character. Uh, and the other reason being it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the stories are, because it's like there isn't any, anyways. <laughs> it's like vague ideas, and that's it. There's no, like, plot. There's no d nothing. It's just, it's there. <laughs> so you don't need, you don't need the synopsis. Trust me. You know what you're getting into. The beginning of it actually has, has a host that makes me feel a lot like the Crypt Keeper, trying to be kind of like the Crypt Keeper. It does start with a kind of cool gore gag. So, like, there is some decent gore to it here and there, but it's not nearly enough for how bad this film is. Um, everything about it is bad. Just everything. 
the intro credits are way too long uh and we and i thought you know that uh as a society we've moved past that with with films uh you don't have these very long opening credits for films anymore and we move past that danzig so just giving you some information for your next film we have moved past that as a society we don't do that anymore don't do that anymore <laughs> Like I said, the music is good, though, throughout. Good music. Good job, Danzig. So the first uh, story is called The Albino Spider of Dejit, uh, which starts with a very awful, long and drawn-out makeout scene, which you assume is leading to sex until something interesting is revealed that made me laugh, and then something else interesting is revealed right after that, which made me laugh even more. And that's one of the things is this film has so much unintentional laughter that happens. Sometimes it's because of specific things that happen in the film. And sometimes it's just because at certain points of the film, you just have to laugh because you're like, this is a film. Like somebody paid money to make this film. Like, and just the, that idea is, is funny to me. It's just funny, man. The concept reveal is very laughable for this story story. Um, it's unbelievably, oh, excuse me, it's unbelievably aimless. It just meanders. It doesn't really go anywhere. But that's kind of, all of, all three of the stories are very much that way. They have, like, a very vague concept. And then it's like, they're like, okay, that's all the work I really want to do is just come up with, like, a vague com concept. So then let's just, like, make the whole rest of it filler. So really, this is like a five-minute short story film, or short film. It's like a five minute short film, but it's a half an hour. <laughs> but and but this one is my favorite one. The first one, the albino spider of Dajit, is my favorite one because it makes me laugh the most and it's the most absurd. So you'll see what I mean. After that, it's kind of like diminishing returns as far as so bad it's good with the stories and the last one just being just boring. Just unbelievably pointless and stupid and boring and no story to it and yeah. So anyway, I won't ruin that too much. Uh, the second story is Change of Face, which is a very straightforward story, and I wrote down that subtlety is not in Glenn Dan Danzig's vocabulary at all. He's very upfront with everything. All of his characters are the worst written characters I've ever seen. They just, if, if they need to uh, let the audience know that they're experiencing anything or thinking about anything, they literally say it. Like, that's one of the biggest no-nos in writing uh, stories or film or whatever. That's one of the biggest no-nos in writing is that you show, you don't tell. Like, you, you can infer things and through actions and stuff like that, the characters can let people know things. But straight up saying, I am sad right now. Why would, <laughs> you know, it's just like, whew, man, oh man. Uh, there's an obsession with lens flares in the second story. Uh, and pole dancing at the same time. There's so much stripper pole dancing in this. That's the that's the film. Like that's the story basically is what it seems like. Is it's about the pole dancing and the lens flares that go on with it, go along with it. Uh, a lot of people say who are in film is that lens flares are for people who think they're auteurs but are really awful filmmakers. And yeah, on full display here for sure. Uh, the story idea is not very new or deep or interesting all that much, but it is a decent enough vague idea that someone else could take that and actually make something interesting out of it. I'd like to see someone who knows how to write and direct and, you know, make a film take that idea and do something fun with it. I mean, you could even turn it into a horror comedy and it would be a good concept too, so there's a concept that someone someone could do something with it's just not danzig just saying and then the third story is drukija contessa of blood now this one is supposedly based off of the story of elizabeth bathory which i'm not gonna you know tell you her backstory if you know you know if you don't you can look it up or you can just watch this and you'll understand what it is but even the fact that the story was already there for danzig to use he didn't do anything with it. He just took the vague concept of who, Eliz or of, of kind of who, not even who Elizabeth Bathory was, but one thing that she did. He just took the concept of one thing she did and then just made that the whole focus with no story. <laughs> Once again, it's like a half an hour and it's just like, okay. 
Um, there's really crappy green screen in this. Uh, and, and you can tell like immediately that it's green screen. This one acts like seeing boobs is enough to entertain people for 30 minutes. Can someone please tell Danzig that it's 2020 and there's free pornography on the internet? I'm just saying, like, it seems like he doesn't get it that like boobs are not a draw for a film. Yes, I know in the 80s that they would have bad horror films and then they would put boobs in it to increase, you know, the viewership, increase people's want to see it, but you can't make that the purpose because it really seems like the sexuality and the nudity of this film is the film. And then everything that comes, like all the story that comes with it was total afterthought. Like, maybe even thought up as they were filming. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> it's obvious that Danzig likes sex, okay? Good for you, Danzig, but we don't need to know. Like, you don't need to visualize that for us. We, we don't care. Everybody likes sex, for the most part. We get it. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that's it for each of the individual things. It's garbage. Uh, horrible acting. The acting is just atrocious. Uh, the directing is not good, and the writing is even worse, especially the dialogue. The dialogue is so, so bad. Uh, I wrote this down. Has Danzig ever met real people? That's a legitimate question after watching this, because he seems to have no concept of how people actually talk and how people actually act. It's totally disjointed. It makes absolutely no sense. People would never talk the way that he writes dialogue. People would never do the things that he writes it did none of it makes sense like i wrote scripts better than this when i was in high school that's totally true 100 percent. i've made a few independent films way better than this way better and they're not very good way better than this it's terrible uh there's no real concept of how long shots should go because a lot of them go way 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 too long and how long a storyline should go for that matter really <laughs> especially when there's no depth or any real story. <laughs> this film seems it was made by someone in love with the idea of making a movie, but devoid of any talent to do so, and devoid of any desire to find out how to really make a film. The thing is this. Rob Zombie was the lead singer of White Zombie. He went on to make films. I don't love all his stuff, but... I enjoyed Lords of Salem, and I thought Devil's Rejects is a good film. Other than that, I don't really like his stuff, but he can make a film. Even though I have problems with his stuff, Danzig just can't make a film. Like <laughs> I say this to say that Rob Zombie's the exception. You know, just because you're famous, just because you have money, just because you wove horror into some of your music at some point in time, doesn't mean that you can make a film. Rob Zombie is the exception, people. Don't look at him and think that you can do what he does. <laughs> oh. And the last thing I have to say is the film is so sex-obsessed that it seems like that was the primary goal. Danzig should just go ahead and direct porn. Because watching this film, it just made you feel like, why is he not just directing porn? Because that's obviously what he really wants. I don't get it. Like, just make that leap, Danzig. Just make everyone happier. Like, make porn. You could even make horror-themed porn. That is a thing. and Or parody porn or whatever. Just, just do that instead, man. You'd be more successful. Seriously, you would be more successful. But you're still going to need to learn how to direct. <laughs> because porn directors still have to direct. You can't just be like, yeah, just do it. Oof. Man, that film's a doozy. It is a doozy. But... I would love, love, love to hear everyone's comments on it. So really put your comments down there on your thoughts. Be as funny as you can, obviously, because we all know it's a terrible film. We all know that. So let, let's have fun with it down there. Let's really have fun with it. Um, I, can't, I will see Danzig's next film. I will. Because after this one, it's like, I don't see it getting better. I really don't. And I just, I just want to see more garbage like this. I just... I don't know. There's something about me. I love seeing terrible films. So anyway, let's go ahead and do the two 
the two star ratings on this one. So as an actual film in the pantheon of all film, um, I can, I only give half stars out. Like I don't go lower than that. But I'm going to make an exception because this film is what it is. I'm going zero stars on this film. This is the only film I will give zero stars to because I have too much respect for people making film otherwise. <laughs> um, mm, uh, but as as a so bad it's good film. It's not even that great as a so bad it's film, as, as a so bad it's good film. If the entire film was what the first story is, I might be able to bump it up in the so bad it's good star rating, but uh, it just keep it just goes downhill overall after the first one. So I'm gonna give it one and a half stars as far as a so bad it's good. I mean, yeah, it's like a one viewing. Some people might say two stars, one and a half to two, whatever. Anyway, like I said, comments, let's talk about this one. Uh, do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button if you like this review, if you like any reviews, if you like any single video I've done, because I do unboxings as well, I do live streams, all that stuff. But that's your way to repay me for watching movies like this <laughs> and uh, not being able to have that time repaid to me. So, uh, no, I enjoyed, I enjoyed laughing at it. But um, yeah, just hit that subscribe for me. I really do appreciate it. And also hit the notification bell because that way you know when I'm putting up new videos or when I'm live streaming, all that jazz. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.